Hello, right now I'm going to be talking about scientific prefixes and how to convert a number from a prefix into both scientific notation and standard notation. Then in the next video we'll be looking at how to get from standard notation into a scientific prefix. So the first thing to know about scientific prefixes is that these two things you can think of as interchangeable. So this is a chart of different scientific prefixes. We have Terra, and that's 10 to the 12th, Giga, 10 to the 9th, and so on. You could find a list like this in a lot of different places on the web, um, but here is one example. I just went from Terra on down to Nano. These are certainly not all the prefixes. There are many more on either side here, and there are even a few in between. Uh, oh, no, they actually included a couple in between that a lot of people don't include here. So um, I'm going to be converting uh, and showing you how to convert from something that has a scientific prefix into normal notation. So we know that they're interchangeable, so let's start with an example. We have 3.5 micrometers. Okay, so we've got this number 3.5 micrometers, but we don't know, want to know how big that is just in plain old meters. The key here is that we want to be able to do something with that micro. Well, again, the nice thing to know is that this prefix and its power of 10 are interchangeable. Okay, you can think of them as equaling each other. 10 to the negative sixth is a micro, meaning we can simply write this as 3.5 times 10 to the negative sixth meters. Now, right now, we're actually in scientific notation already because we have digit, decimal, rest of our digits, our power of 10. Okay? Now, all we did was replaced this micrometers with this 10 to the negative sixth. So now if we wanted in decimal notation, we're going to use the trick that I have taught you uh, previously, remembering our number lines. So we are at, here's zero, we're at negative six right now. I'm just going to put negative six over here. Now if we want to be in standard notation, we want our power of 10 to be 10 to the zero. So what we're going to do is say, okay, well, we want to end up with something that's 10 to the zero. In order to do so, we need to go right on the number line with our exponent here. Therefore, our decimal place goes to the left. So from here, we would move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You might be losing that behind the... Here, I can do this. So now that's... We're adding zeros here. And there's our decimal place. So by moving our decimal place to the left, our exponent moves to the right. And really all we're doing is this is telling us to divide a bunch of times. So we're dividing by 10, dividing by 10, dividing by 10, dividing by 10. Okay? And so we end up with 0 0.5 zeros, 3, 5, times 10 to the 0. Since 10 to the 0 is the same thing as 1, we're left with simply 0 0.0000035. Okay. Now the question is, is this reasonable? Well, when you study this chart, you should know that these things down here with the negative exponents are very small units. They're very small things. Whereas up here, we have very large things. One way you can remember that is that we look at, you know, as storage space gets bigger for computers, we went from originally really looking at bytes as far as storage capabilities for the early computers, then on to kilobytes, then on to megabytes, then, you know, in the last 10 years or so, it's been normally gigabytes, and now we're looking at getting computers, personal computers, on the terabyte uh, order of magnitude. And so, you can think of that as, that's are getting bigger. Then smaller, well, we know centimeters are small, millimeters are a little smaller, micro, nano, getting smaller and smaller. Okay? So, this should be something really small in micrometers, and sure enough, it is, so we have a reasonable value there. So now we're going to start our second example. Uh, where we're going to take a really big number this time instead. We're going to use 26.5 gigameters. Okay? So the first thing to remember is that g, giga, is replaceable with 10 to the ninth. They're the same thing. We can just change them out and it means exactly the same thing. So I can take this 26.5. Instead of writing a g, a giga, I write times 10 to the ninth. Okay? Now, the tricky thing here is that we're not in scientific notation. We need the decimal place to be here if we're going to be in scientific notation, between the first and second digit. So we're going to remember our number line here. Right now we're at 9, here's 10, here's 8. Okay? So 0 is over here somewhere on the number line. I know that we're only going to move one place one way or the other because I'm just moving one decimal place to get into scientific notation. Well, I'm going to move one place to the left, meaning from here I move one place to the right. 
So now I have 2.65 times 10 to the 10th meters. This should make sense because we have a smaller number multiplied by a bigger power of 10. Whereas here we have a slightly bigger number multiplied by a smaller power of 10. Which means both of these are exactly the same thing as this to begin with. So this is our official scientific notation. Finally, we're going to convert that into standard decimal notation. And we're going to use this same trick again. So right now we're at 10, and we're going to try to end up over here at 0. Now obviously that's not really 0, but we'll, we'll work with it. So we're at 10 with our uh, exponent here, and we want to end up at 0. That means we need to go to the left. Because remember, we want to end up with something times 10 to the 0 to be in standard notation. So, in order to move to the left here, we need to move to the right with our decimal place. Therefore, I'm going to write out 2.65 and I'm going to write a bunch of zeros because we're going to move to the right a lot. I'm not actually counting them, so hopefully it's close. And we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we're going one more. So there's our decimal place. So 10 to the 0 is the same as 1. So really we have 2, 6, 5, then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. I believe that's correct. There. Now the other way to know that this is true is that there are some patterns here, okay? The nice thing about these is that they actually go up by thousands. Kilo is a thousand. Mega is a million. Giga is a billion, okay? So by having 26.5 gigameters, that's just saying 26.5 billion meters. Well, there's our millions place, there's our billions place. We have 26.5 billion meters. Oh, I forgot my unit here. Okay? And that's how you convert from a scientific prefix into both scientific notation and standard decimal notation.